Once upon a time, a small town boy from the south traveled across the ocean to the island of love called Cyprus. He grew into a fine young man on a mission to preach the gospel to the whole world. Then, one day, when he least expected it, he met a Polish girl. Risking it all, he asked her out on a church date. It didn't take long before they fell in love and lived happily ever after. Hold on, I missed the best part. They had a son, later diagnosed with autism, which changed everything. Then two years later, they welcomed a little girl with a heart of gold and a will of iron. They were missionaries and autism parents trying to keep the faith and sanity. Each week, they'll share their journey of love, faith, hope, special needs parenting, and everything else in between. Here is The Preacher and the Polish Girl. How do you start a fire? How do you keep one going? Should we make Valentine's Day special for our significant other? Today's episode continues our discussion about love. Love is in the air. <laughs> How do you start a fire? Uh huh. I think the fire starts automatically. When one two... person is a match, the other person is a sulfur. Ew. Uh, well. <laughs> No, I think the fire starts when two people meet and they have chemistry. Okay. And there's there's an there's attraction, obviously. Obviously. There's a there's attraction, there's interest. Attraction or traction? Maybe both. What is attraction? That's a weird word. Attraction? No, traction. Oh, traction. I think that's what happens after attraction. You try to you try to get some traction with the other person <laughs> that you're attracted to. You're using to. the word in the definition. Yes. No. What is attraction? Attraction? No, traction. What is traction? Yes. What is traction? I don't know. What, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> I really don't know what you mean. Okay. So how does one start a fire? Well, the fire just starts when two people meet. Mm-hmm. They immediately, if if th- there's an attraction between those two people, they yeah. start. There, there's a there's a natural tension created between two people that are attracted to one another and they're drawn to one another and if they get the chance to spend more time with each other mm-hmm. and the attraction the grows fire increases the because fire increases they want to move to another stage of the relationship yes and so the fire starts by consequence of meeting someone that you are interested in, someone who just kind of takes your breath away mm-hmm. but i think the bigger but isn't it lust well lust is temporary lust, and yeah, lust would certainly more physical it can play a role. You don't want it to be lust. I mean, as a Christian, you want to try to, you know, you you want to try to contain. I think there's a there's a fine line between attraction and lust. Mm-hmm. Do we cross over into lust? Sure, we do, because we're we're all humans. We all have red blood, so we can cross over into lust. But we really want to keep it in the parameter of attraction mm-hmm. to where we are interested in this person. Yeah. There's an unexplainable fire. There's a there's an unexplainable nervousness in your stomach. Butterflies. Mm-hmm. All those things. Falling in love. But the bigger question for married people is how do you keep one going? Million dollar question. Our society puts a lot of emphasis on this day of the year, this February the 14th. It just happened. Mm -hmm. And where were we on Valentine's Day? We're in church. We were in we were in church. Revival Uh, service. We're having revival services right now, and we were all in church for Valentine's Day. Where were we on Super Bowl Sunday? In church. (laughs) Again, because of what God is doing in our church. Because of the love that we forgot. The real love. Now, you know, we, we know that Valentine's Day is really just marketing. Mm-hmm. And is it wrong to make the day special for your spouse? Of course not. And, and it's a nice thing to do. But I think most couples... Um, when I can't you just s- remember to love your wife or your husband one day a year, then, yeah. or just on anniversary sure. and Valentine's Day, then I'm sorry for you. <laughs> yes, Valentine's Day really should be every day in the sense of the love and wanting to make your significant other feel special. Yes, I agree. So, do we disagree with Valentine's Day? No. Do we disagree with that being the only time you make your spouse feel special? Yes. Uh, Yes. (laughs) Yes. Absolutely. So, Uh simple solution to rekindling the fire in marriage. Come on, bring it. 
Fall in love with your spouse over and over again. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Easy peasy. Right? Sure. Just fall in love with your spouse. Just stop. Okay. Just but stop doing wrong. It is possible, but there are some conditions yes. that need to be met. Absolutely. Let's talk about that. I would say one of the biggest factors in marriage is forgiveness. Mm, that's a tough one. Forgiveness, we know, is a two-way street. Mm -hmm. We know the Bible talks a lot about forgiveness. We know that forgiveness is possible by one party, but reconciliation requires more than one party. Mm -hmm. One person can forgive another. Like, for example, a husband can forgive his wife. A wife can forgive her husband. Mm -hmm. But if it's not a two-way street, then reconciliation doesn't come. You know, we want to forgive each other, but we want to reconcile. We want to reconcile. And that's, that's where the real challenge comes in. But, you know, sometimes apology in words is like with kids. Kids often come and like, I'm so sorry, mommy. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Or I promise I will change. I promise. It's just lip service. Well, the thing is, with forgiveness, the phrase I'm sorry is a very overused phrase. In other words, we will even use it in our daily conversations when we say things like, well, I'm sorry, but I have to tell you this. Yes. Well, I'm sorry if, and it's not even being used in the right context. So right. it's kind of an abused phrase. Mm -hmm. And you have said this a few times. Best apology is a changed behavior. Yes. Seriously. Best apology is a changed behavior. It is. And so if we are truly wanting to be forgiven, then we're going to take steps, aren't we? We're mm -hmm. going to take steps to make sure that that behavior that has offended our husband or wife is not repeated. Yep. And that requires something bigger than us. Yeah, Because absolutely. people want to change. You cannot just will yourself to be better. Sure. Maybe for a little while, maybe for a day. But as Christians, of course, we believe that putting God first allows you and enables a person to have the change behavior. Mm -hmm. But if you truly love someone and you truly love the investment mm -hmm. that's been made in years, in time, yeah. in shared treasure, children that have been produced, even grandchildren for older couples, mm -hmm. you really want to have changed behavior. In other words, this hurts my wife. This hurts my husband. So I... I don't want to just say I'm sorry. I actually want to stop doing this thing. Or change my behavior so I don't hurt them again. Yep. The yes. same way. Yep. I yep. love that. <laughs> yep. When we come to forgiveness, I'm thinking about having faith in your spouse, that they are capable of changing and actually listening to you observing what hurts you, and then applying that. So many couples, especially with longer years of experience, mm -hmm. they're like, oh, no, here we go again. Oh, you will never change. Mm -hmm. You will never change. And maybe I've said it, and I apologize, you see. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. I felt that. Yeah, you felt that, you see. But <laughs> isn't it true that we sometimes lose faith in our spouse? Absolutely. When we're too quick to apologize before we've really taken the time to take a step back and, and reflect on how we've hurt the spouse, a knee-jerk reaction is to say, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. because we don't want the consequences of our action to be prolonged. Because there's so many pressures in life, we don't want the extra tension. Mm -hmm. So we're so quick, oh, I got to fix this quick. I better fix this quick. Here, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll never yeah. do it again. Yeah. And we overcommit without really stepping back and saying, hold on, I know I need to apologize, mm -hmm. but I also need to do some reflection first. We need to go maybe in opposite rooms, opposite corners. Yeah, I was going to mention that next, that it's okay to leave for a moment, to take a breather. Yes. And instead of saying something in a moment that we may regret, just leave a room, take a deep breath. Think about it, pray about it, and then come back and try to fix things. And have the faith in your spouse that if they have been sincere in their apology, mm -hmm. then that means it doesn't mean that they'll never do it again, but it means they are sincerely regretful of their actions mm -hmm. and they're going to take steps to minimize and hopefully reduce and even completely stop a certain action. But humans will never stop hurting each other. And I heard this said a long time ago, mm -hmm. and it's, it's it's really hard to accept, but it's the, it's the truth. We hurt the ones we love the most. The most. Mm -hmm. But we can hurt each other less, I think, if we are forgiving, if we take steps to change our behavior, if there's certain things we're doing 
that are contributing to those behaviors, then we have to distance ourselves from those things that are contributing to the behavior. And mm-hmm. we'll get to that in just a minute. Certain devices that we're going to mention. But I've often heard people say, never go to bed angry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So basically, you just got to stay up for a few days. <laughs> <laughs> just don't go to bed. Just, so I've not slept for a week now. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Absolutely not. That That's... Um, <laughs> That's not the case. It, it, it definitely isn't healthy to go to bed angry because the no. problem, if you go to bed angry, you're not going to sleep well. Yeah. What and does the Bible say about that? What does it say? Something about the don't let the wrath. Oh, don't oh. let the sun go down on your wrath. Yeah. I was like, oh, man, I'm, I'm a pastor and I'm struggling <laughs> to know what does the Bible say about going sleeping well. So. Mm-hmm. You threw you you threw me there, girl. Oh, yeah. When okay. you said, well, what does the Bible say about sleeping? Yeah. I'm like, uh, uh, uh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, uh, not let the sun go down on your wrath, but actually one of my favorite verses when I was a child mm-hmm. uh, is Psalm 4, verse 8. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep, mm. for thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. Right. In other words, uh, hopefully my wife won't kill me in my sleep. Mm. You will <laughs> you will make me dwell in safety while I sleep. No, that's not what the psalmist no. meant, but... I thought I'd throw that in. Yeah. But no, sleep is important. Why is it important not to go to bed angry? Because mm-hmm. if you don't sleep well, guess what's going to happen the next day? Everyone's going to be grouchy. Yeah. And guess what's going to happen? Probably more. And from a medical point of view. More you bad know, behaviors. Sleep is restorative. Restorative. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Restorative. 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 They both work. <laughs> what else? You're married to Polish. Your English you need, is much better than my Polish. You do need sleep to allow your body to... Fix all the organs, yes. uh, restore the new cells in the body and everything else. So sleep is very important, even for our nervous system. Sure. We heard from our chiropractor Yes, that the stressors in our life, including lack of sleep. But poor sleep will contribute to poor performance. Oh, absolutely. Which, may, yeah. w- which will lead to poor behavior. And grumpiness. Which will lead to grumpiness and grouchiness. Mm-hmm. And then that's going to lead to more arguments. Uh, that's mm-hmm. going to lead to more confrontations, yeah. and it's going to make everybody feel more hopeless about the situation. That's true. No. Sometimes the best thing you can do when you're not getting along with your spouse the way you know you need to mm-hmm. is both of you to get a great night's sleep. Mm-hmm. If sleep. it's possible. Now, or does, just give each other time to rest. Sure. And like go, take a nap if you need yep. to, just... Get extra time, especially um, in families with special needs. Sure. Sleep is priceless. It's like absolute luxury. Mm-hmm. Or also for parents of newborns. Sure. When they have same. to wake up every two kids, hours. Toddlers, and so on. Yes. the same. Yep. Uh, so, yes, sleep is very, very important. You'll be amazed how much tension and how much stress and how many arguments could be greatly reduced just by Sleeping better. Mm-hmm. It don't. It won't fix everything, but it may fix a lot of things. Right. At so least never give you a go better to bed pers- angry. Yes, just give you a better perspective, if nothing else. Mm-hmm. Not just forgiving, though. What else? Serving each other. Oh, that's a deep topic. Because nowadays the culture says, you know, I'm not your servant. It's all me, 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 and I will celebrate me. Happy Valentine's Day to me, 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 me. Sure, and and there's also the thing that we see as a modern phenomenon with social media is. People do not serve quietly. They don't serve their spouses quietly. They uh, want to declare it to the world. And I've done it before, I'm sure. I've bragged I've on done you. It. And I've I felt the it. I felt probably the pressure to oh I better brag on my wife today, let the world know how much I love her. But really <laughs> Because if everyone I, else does and she will feel yeah, neglected. But, but if if isn't it better to just love them yes. in private Actually, rather than declaring for the show. it? Yeah. Yes. Look at all the things I've done for you. Look, look at all the charitable actions. You know, people, they feed a homeless person and they take <laughs> a selfie. Yeah. What's, what is that? Oh, man. Yeah. I promise you, folks, Miss Ula Tinsley would much prefer me on Valentine's Day to get her favorite food. Indian our, food. Indian food or something mm-hmm. like that. Then flowers. This, it doesn't mean she doesn't like flowers. It doesn't mean I'll never buy her flowers. Uh, flowers. No. But it's just I, I, I try to serve her in ways that I know are more meaningful to her. Right. But, you know, there's a lot of verses that speak on the subject of serving one another. And mm-hmm. 1 Peter 3, 7, for example, says, Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them, referring to the wives, according mm-hmm. to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Mm-hmm. 
You know, society is probably not crazy about that phrase, weaker vessel. Especially um, feminists. Sure. But this is not speaking about a woman being a weaker will. Less capable. Less capable. It's simply saying that she is the weaker vessel. She has she, a different set of emotions. Exactly. Yeah. Then her husband, she has different needs. She is built differently. She is built to bear children. Mm -hmm. So she is not weaker in the sense of ability. I promise you that. more nourishing. It's a different role by nature. But physically weaker vessel. Physically weaker vessel, And more sure. emotional and therefore uh, needs to be protected. Just like, you know, Christ loved the church and, and gave himself forward. We're going to read those verses as well mm -hmm. in Ephesians. So... We looked at 1 Peter 3, 7, but also Ephesians. There's several verses in Ephesians that I think will help all couples mm -hmm. kind of recenter themselves. Yeah. You know, get back to square one. Hit the reset button. Ephesians 5 is a great passage of Scripture for hitting the reset button. You've got, for example, Ephesians 5, 21. It says, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. That's a more general, that's what mm -hmm. believers do mm -hmm. to one another. We all submit. We all serve each other. But then it says in verse 22, wives... Submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Oh. Notice the phrase as unto the Lord. Yes. Submit. Women hear submit and they think, oh, I have to I be a doormat. I don't want to be a slave. Yeah. I'm a doormat. I have yeah. to submit and just bow to his will. Master. Not at all. Submitting means that you are giving your husband permission to lead the household according to the example set by Christ. Mm -hmm. Christ is the head of the church, and the individual homes, the father represents Christ. You're the, the husbandman. Providers and the promoters of uh, faith, of mm -hmm. matters of faith. So we are taking the helm, spiritually speaking, representing Christ in our homes as the head. Just uh, Christ is the head of the church. We're the heads of our home. Mm -hmm. But that does not mean this submission is not being a doormat. Okay, so what does uh, what does the Bible say about husbands? Like, what do they have now, to do? Now, why did you have to bring up husbands? Let's go there. I want to keep reading the submission <laughs> part. <laughs> let's go, let's go. No, actually, women, I, I promise you that men have a much bigger weight of responsibility on their shoulders. Mm -hmm. um, so what you're doing as a wife is you are, you are, you are submitting and saying, he's taking the lead. I'm going to allow my husband mm -hmm. to be the spiritual head of our home. I'm, I'm going to allow him to, to lead us and mm -hmm. set the example for us and to lead the charge as unto the Lord. Remember, it's for him. Yes. It's not for your husband as much as it is for him. But then it says in verse 25, Right. Husbands, love your wives, even as oh. Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Ow. Oh. That is a very heavy verse, and I have never been able to understand the full magnitude of that verse. Mm -hmm. But I do know this. If I can, with God's help, wake up every day and say, how can I give myself for my wife today? What can I sacrificially do for her to put her needs above my own? Of mm -hmm. course, Christ gave himself. He gave everything he had. He left nothing on the table. He put it all on the yeah. line for us. He gave everything. This is a lot heavier burden and responsibility than for wives. Wives need to submit and respect to that husbands. order, to that pattern that yes, God has, has but designed. We are not commanded to love our husbands. That's interesting. Well, love comes in many different forms. Like, can you really submit to your husband when you're not loving him? No, you can't. Exactly. And a husband can't. How can you give yourself for your wife when you don't love her? Exactly. And that's why we have the previous verse to tell us we submit ourselves one to another and. A big mm -hmm. part of submission is love. Like, mm -hmm. if I love my wife, I'm going to submit to her needs. And if she loves me, she's going to submit to my needs, but also submit to the pattern that God mm -hmm. has designed in the Scriptures. And so the reason that wives are, are submitting to their husbands and the reason that husbands are giving themselves for their wives, really, verse 33 sums up what men and women are are made of and what mm -hmm. we're designed like. It says, Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence, which means respect, mm -hmm. honor her husband. Right. Women absolutely need to know they're cherished and loved. Mm -hmm. And men absolutely will not feel loved if they are not respected. True. Respect is, is a major well, deal. That's I think you men. hit the jackpot with this verse because that's exactly how it is. If wife feels unloved or maybe not appreciated she's for not going to submit exactly it's very hard to submit it's going to be resentment and then she will 
when she feels resentment towards her husband, then she will not really respect him. Mm -hmm. And if the husband doesn't feel respect, then he will feel like more he is, distance. Yeah, the, if he doesn't feel like like the the wife is submitting, mm -hmm. then he is naturally going to struggle with sacrificially giving himself for his wife. So it is absolutely a two-way street. Mm -hmm. In fact, the goals are so lofty that it requires Christ really yeah, in it us. Does. It does, because he sets the standard. Remember, it's unto the Lord. It's for him. And I know that's going to offend people, but we are unapologetically seeking. We haven't achieved this standard, but we are unapologetically seeking to live to biblical standards. So yeah. we don't get our standards or morals from Hollywood, and we mm -hmm. don't get them from famous musicians or actors. We try, with, with God's help, to get them from the Scriptures. Mm -hmm. So forgiveness, major deal. Mm -hmm. Service, Service to each other. Mm -hmm. major deal. Yes. Now, um, reconnect. Oh. How do couples reconnect if the fire is needing some fanning? Mm-hmm. If the coals need and to be let's rekindled. Be honest, you know, every couple needs it and we need this. So when we were preparing for this and we went to our Valentine's Day banquet at the church mm -hmm. and we had some amazing speakers mm -hmm. and testimonies and some great tips on how to rekindle the fire mm -hmm. in your marriage and what to do and what not to do. And maybe we can talk about that as well as we are now talking about reconnecting. Well... The only way you can reconnect with someone that you love is to make time for them. That's very important. That's, again, one of the love languages, right? The quality Absolutely. time. Is it your love language? I think the love languages touch on everyone. There might be certain sure. things that are bigger. Like we know that men are typically more physical than women. Right. Have more physical needs. Not not saying they that, that women don't have physical needs, too. Of course they do. But perhaps it typically presents more in men. Right. But women... And I'm saying women loosely because I don't want to just refer to you in general terms. You yes. are not you are not just women. You are an individual. You're and my as wife. a rebel, I will be acting opposite than the general woman. You know that. So that's contrarian. Like, we have a contrarian, a folks. Warning. Contrarian <laughs> alert. Contrarian alert. I do honor and respect you. So go ahead. Lead. But make time for each other. Yes. And don't make time on your own standards and, and, and make time how you think you should make time. Mm -hmm. Make time according to what's important to your partner. Mm -hmm. um, and according to reality. Yes. Because sometimes... You, you have to be realistic. Yes. You know, you're not going to be able to go on getaways every week. You're, you know, we don't all have just endless financial budgets to exactly. just zip away somewhere. Hey, let's fly to Rome. Let's... But again, it doesn't have to be expensive. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Time is priceless. So. It absolutely is. And it's running out every day. So it's important that we make time for each other. And time to listen to each other. What was that? <laughs> I couldn't resist. She, uh, it was it was laid to me on a plate, on a silver platter. Touche. No, we, no, we listen attentive, at, attentively. See? Oh, you see? I, I'm, I'm, so I'm in such unnatural. trouble now. Yeah. It's so, it's, I'm in so much trouble <laughs> that I can't even say the word attentively. Oh, I oh, said Why it. are you in trouble? Let's talk about that. No, let's yes, not. Yes, let's go there. We have to be transparent. Listen, we, cell phones, ah. listen, I, I doing some, some personal inventory yeah, if there's one change that I wish I could make really for the last 10 years or more mm -hmm. is the – if I had just – Hand extension. Yes. If I had just gotten rid of – if I had just limited cell phone use, particularly in the days of social media, it has been It's a, very addictive. It is. It and, is. It, and it has been a time robber. It's, it's robbed us of a lot of precious time with our children, it's with each true. other. It's true. And, you know, we all – well, to say we need, I mean, it, it's it, life would certainly be harder without them. It would be very difficult to communicate in this modern world. And let's be so, honest. Our daughter, when we had a talk like, hey, how can we help you change some behaviors? I said, well, you don't even pay attention to whatever because you're both on your phones. And we've been guilty. And that was a wake-up call was a wake -up for call. both of us. And Absolutely. then it, of course, affects our relationship because even if we're talking about something we see on the phone, it's brief, but we are back to the phone. Sure. So, yes, you can't we've been listen, working on it. You can't listen attentively if you have... So a, how can we listen attentively? We put away the cell phone. Wow. Yeah. You know, it's interesting that it's called a cell phone because it can make you feel like you're in a cell sometimes. 
or it's an extension of your body. It's another sure. cell in your body. Sure. So put away the phone. Or if you're watching TV, just pause mute it. Mute the TV. Mute it. Pause. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Put away the book you're reading. Yeah. Don't take the call. If somebody's calling, mute it. Put, send a little message. I yeah. can't I will talk call now. You, soon. you know, we don't yeah. have to take every call. We don't have to respond to every message right. immediately. Yeah. And I've been guilty of that. And I, I want to be and better. The reason for that is to really hear what your spouse is trying to communicate. Yes. Even if it's something trivial. Even if it's something about like, hey, I was thinking we can cook whatever spaghetti for dinner tomorrow. Or I was thinking about the youth revival, sure. what's happening in our church. Sure. And then we just put away everything and just brainstorm mm. and share and listen. You know, everyone's nostalgic of the old days. Everyone talks about, like, we're both, what do they call us, Generation Z? What, what are we, the kids born in the 70s? I don't know. I'm not sure what we're called. Maybe I said the right maybe thing. Maybe you are in the maybe 70s. We're, Oh, I'm, I'm not supposed to reveal. Yes, I'm practically yeah, you're in a. Oh, yeah, practically. <laughs> well, whatever we're supposed to be called, the fact is, any everyone my age, every, yes. basically everyone in their mid forties, we were all '80s kids. Yes, everyone. And in And so your age. we all talk about the '80s. Yes, as being a magical time. We mm. all talk about the '90s as being a magical time. Right, because it's our youth. And and that is a big Childhood part of it. Youth. But you know what I think is. Is, is probably something we miss. Mm-hmm. We probably miss how we connected with people mm. back then, yeah. before the advent of cell phones and social media and smartphones. And yes. So if we put those things away, and no, we're not joining a uh, 80s club or 90s club. We're not going to pretend that it's the 90s or the <laughs> 80s. <clears throat> Some people But do. we're just going to get back to communicating with one another yes. as if we were in the 80s and 90s. Right. And plan a date night every now and then. Yes. It doesn't have to be a weekly thing. It doesn't have to be a monthly thing. Well, it if you would, can't, if, 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 if it can be monthly, that's great. Yes. Yes, it would be. Or even weekly, that's great if you have the ability. I'm not trying to give a sob story here, but any special needs families, uh, any parents of special needs children, mm-hmm. you're in the same boat as we're in. We know that it's harder for us to have a date night. In fact, sometimes it's downright impossible yes. to plan a date night because you really have to Um, depend on someone you absolutely trust who is trained how to babysit a special needs child yes and it's now now we we know that um, uh, parents of of uh, babies and have young toddlers they have a challenge too sure it's a little different of course it's a little more complex with a special needs child because there is more involved special needs yes. yes and there's a greater level of care required so yes it's not easy but listen everyone should have at least one person in their life that they can train mm-hmm. if they're not capable yet you can train them to tr- to take care of your child mm-hmm. for a brief time in your absence to give you that respite that you need mm-hmm. with your spouse yes so even if it's just going away for an hour even if it's just going for a stroll whatever you can do to have a date night and have time just for you and your spouse. Make it happen. Let's not think of a million reasons why we can't. Mm-hmm. Let's say, yes, I can't, and that's why I'm going to turn my can't into a can. Mm-hmm. I'm going to find somebody that's a friend. If you, even if you don't have family members that can watch a, a, a child for you, uh, recruit one of your friends and just be brutally honest with them. Yeah. Say, listen, we need we need a break. We need a, a date night, and, and we're nervous as you are, and we don't want to put too much on you. Yeah, but we desperately need some time together. And if I showed you what to do, would you be willing to give us a, a couple hours. of hours yeah. every month? And I'm sure that we all have at least one great friend, even a trusted if it, person that would be mm-hmm. willing to be trained and willing to take on board your advice, and would give you that much needed night mm-hmm. away. And we are very blessed and privileged to have a wonderful mom and dad. And your sister, both sisters, actually. Yes. And um, we have people in church who volunteered recently Mm -hmm. and actually came up to us and said, hey, what can I do to spend more time with Michael? Because I feel like, you know, this may be helpful in the future. And that's huge. That's tremendous. So forgiveness, service, reconnection. I think you summed it up. Thank you for listening, and let's try to make sure that we're celebrating our mutual love, not every year, but every day. 
God bless you folks.